you know, I have in my hands a book called The Importance of Living by Lin Yutang. Those of you who have listened to my show since 94 understand the charm of this man and how I've talked for years about the book, The Importance of Living, which I discovered when I was 18 and going through my uh, sufferings of young Werther phase. And I thought, oh, life is horrible, you know, oh, it's me. I can't take it anymore. And I found this book, The Importance of Living, where he brought the yin and yang together. He taught me that we are basically, although we have a soul, that we're monkeys. Our bodies are that of a monkey. I mean, I know many of you are offended by that, but truthfully, you know, it's been put another way that we're the Neanderthals and the Neanderthal diet. But you got to remember that there's the human body is that of an animal. No matter how you think you're saintly, if you, the minute you disconnect from the fact that you have an animal body, you go crazy. And that's where all your trouble begins. Anyway, this book put me together because there were chapters in it like, uh, uh, well, let me give you an example. Lin Yutang, The Importance of Living. I didn't write it, by the way. I'm not Lin and I'm not Yutang. But I never saw a book like this which talked about views of mankind, Christian, Greek, and Chinese, our animal heritage, the monkey epic, on being mortal, on having a stomach, on having strong muscles, on having a mind, and on human dignity and the rise of human civilization. Then he goes into enjoyment of life. That's what I'm getting at. And he talks about whole chapters on, uh, on sex, on celibacy, a freak of civilization. My favorite chapter was the enjoyment of living, on lying in bed. A whole chapter on lying in bed on sitting in chairs, on conversation, on tea and friendship, on smoke and incense, on drink and wine games, on food and medicine, the inhumanity of Western dress, on house and interiors. And I remember I read this when I was 18 years old, which goes back quite a few decades. And when I first stumbled upon it, I was astounded by this. And it was a combination of sort of our animal bodies with our spiritual beings. In a way, I had never been able to unify the two. You know, kids grow up, they don't know what they are. Either you run too much in one direction or too much in the other. Either you become too much of the the spiritual and you try to deny the body, or you become too much of the, uh, um, the, the, the animal, you know, the pleasure seeker, and you deny your spirit. And this book, for me, brought it all together. And one of the favorite parts for me was... Uh, Chin's 33 Happy Moments. And I don't know if the people listening to this show, since I'm in a sort of different mood today and I had enough with Obama, this stuff was good stuff. And it was the happy moments of a Chinese as described by uh, a 17th century playwright in China named Chin Sheng Tan. And he wrote about, he sat with his friends when they were locked up in a temple for 10 days on account of rainy weather. And they thought about what were the truly happy moments of human life? Moments in which the spirit is tied up with the senses, and he writes about them, and I'm not going to read all of them to you. I'm going to give you a taste of some of them, and you'll see if you get a kick out of them. Here's one. See if it strikes you as a happy moment in your life. I wake up in the morning and seem to hear someone in the house sighing and saying that last night someone died. I immediately ask to find out who it is and learn that it is the sharpest, most calculating fellow in town. Ah, uh, is this not happiness? Remember this? Remember he wrote that happiness does not consist in the flights of poets, uh, of that kind of thing, but happiness consists in getting your hair cut every two weeks and, and watching your neighbor fall off the roof. That's what I was trying to talk about. In other words, that's human nature, is this normalcy. And also, if you get pleasure in seeing someone you hate fall off a roof, don't be guilty about it. Everyone likes to see their evil neighbor fall off a roof. <laughs> Here's another one. Wait. Um, da, 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 da. I, it has been raining for a whole month and I lie in bed in the morning like one drunk or ill refusing to get up first of all that unto itself is beautiful we work so damn hard in America we never lay in bed we think it's bad for our hearts the opposite is true I actually am a big believer in laying in bed I believe that laying in bed is way underestimated. I think we're just crazy with our running and our dashing and our this and our that. Anyway, listen to this one. It has been raining for a whole month, and I lie in bed in the morning like one drunk or ill refusing to get up. Suddenly, I hear a chorus of birds announcing a clear day. Quickly, I pull aside the curtain, push open the window, and see the beautiful sun shining and glistening, and the forest looks like having a bath. Ah, is this not happiness? Okay. Let's see then. Here's another. I've got a few more. It's so disconnected from today. Here, I love this one. To cut with a sharp knife a bright green watermelon on a big scarlet plate of a summer afternoon. Ah, is this not happiness? You get the picture? In other words, can you see a, a, a watermelon 
on a hot day and just cutting it and get pleasure out of it. That's what he's talking about. We've lost this. We think that because the ad men have so jumbled our brains, the mad men, the advertising, that we have to go somewhere to find happiness. We have to buy something to find happiness. We all know that that's rubbish. I've long wanted to become a monk, but was worried because I would not be permitted to eat meat. If then I could be permitted to become a monk and yet eat meat publicly, why then I would heat a basin of hot water and with the help of a sharp razor shave my head clean in a summer month. Ah, is this not happiness? To keep three or four spots of eczema in a private part of my body and now and then to scald or bathe it with hot water behind closed doors. <laughs> ah, is this not happiness? <laughs> I mean, does this translate well anymore? I mean, I love this book. It reminds you how simple things are. You know, a few more, because it's getting close to Thanksgiving. I feel liberated. I love this one. Wait. A traveler returns home after a long journey, and he sees the old city gate and hears the women and children on both banks of the river talking his own dialect. Ah, is this not happiness? Now, let's say uh, we don't have an old city gate, and we don't have our own dialect, or do we? We certainly do have regional accents. How about when you've been on a long business trip and you come back to your city or your town and just the sound of the horns and just the sound of the cab driver, even if he's from Bengali, even if he is a Bengali, isn't that what makes you feel good and at home and happy? That's what we're talking about. Here's a nice one. I am not a saint and I am therefore not without sin. In the night I did something wrong and I get up in the morning and feel extremely ill at ease <laughs> about let me, okay, I am not a saint, and I'm therefore not without sin. In the, in the night, I did something wrong, and I get up in the morning and feel extremely ill and ease about it. Suddenly, I remember what is taught by Buddhism, that not to cover one's sins is the same as repentance. So then I begin to tell my sin to the entire company around, whether they are strangers or my old friends. Ah, is this not happiness? Sort of sounds like, like Oprah. <laughs> Here's one that I've really lived by. This is me. To open the window and let a wasp out of the room. Ah, is this not happiness? That's a good one. Have you ever let a wasp out of a room or a fly and felt something? Huh? I have. I have done that. Uh, to see someone's kite line broken. Ah, is this not happiness? To see a wild prairie fire. Ah, is this not happiness? To have just finished repaying all one's debts. <laughs> ah, is this not happiness, Obama? <laughs> now, if he went to China and said, I'm finished repaying my debts, by the way, see if you can collect it, then I would say I would love the guy. You know what I'm saying? To end that little... If he, if he could go to China and say, you know what, let me tell you something. We owe you a couple of trillion dollars. You owe a whole a lot of our T-bills. You own them. But let me tell you something, Charlie. Here's the way it's going to go down. We ain't paying you. We can't pay you. You're never going to collect, but I'm willing to negotiate right now 10 cents on the dollar. Then I would say, ah, is this not happiness? Here's another one. Listen to this. This kept me going for, for decades. Only those who take leisurely what the people of the world are busy about can be busy about what the people of the world take leisurely. Now, that's written by, a, you know, that's so Chinese. Only those who take leisurely what the people of the world are busy about can be busy about what the people of the world take leisurely, meaning... People, you know, in other words, if you turn work, leisure into work, you'll really do good at it. Now, look at this whole chapter on growing old gracefully. You know, you know, there was another, a whole, a whole couple of pages, James, on how to pick a wife. It was amazing that a China, he said that how the Chinese people look towards, how a man looks towards a woman. He only sees a woman in terms of what kind of mother she would make for uh, for his future children. And, you know, if you were to teach that to young men, how it would change all of society? Well, you know... Now th think about it. What if you taught young men that instead of, like, the wink of an eye, like Larry David, you know, the more sex, the better. You're always in heat because you're such a stud. What if you taught a young man that when you go out with a girl, try to pick someone who could be a potential wife and think of what kind of genes she has... And what kind of mother she's going to be to your children. Can you imagine how that would revolutionize this society?